So as you are to consider your geometry of uh, straight lines, you also ought to understand or you need to understand the concept of our parallel lines. That's another part that is very, very important in our simplification. What is it that you consider when given parallel lines? So straight lines that are the same distance from each other along the whole of their length are called parallel lines. These are lines which maintain same distance throughout here. There is a same distance. The distance in within here is the same throughout. So these lines, they are said to be parallel. And the indication to that are these arrows that we are seeing, this arrow, and this one, it is to indicate that the lines are parallel, that the lines will never meet. So it can be two, they can be, it can be one like that, they can be indicated as two, they can indicate even three like that. It is just an indication that the lines are parallel. Do not confuse with these on shapes when you are given a line and a line like this. These ones, they show that the lines are equal. The lines are equal. These ones, the lines are parallel, okay? So do not confuse with a line like this uh, to these arrows like this one. These ones are for being parallel. So if a line is drawn along these parallel lines like this, this is called a transversal line. So a transversal line is a line that intersects the two parallel lines. So like I said here, in terms of the arrows on the two lines to indicate uh, then the transversal divides, gives angles. As we can see from these parallel lines, we are going to create a lot of angles from this transversal line that intersects these lines. In the diagram, AB is parallel to CD. This line, A to B, is parallel to the line CD. Okay? And how do we write this? We can write this in short. AB is parallel to CD. AB parallel. So this is indication of being parallel to CD. They are two like this. Remember, you also have this indication when there are three. Do not confuse with the part of similar. Okay? Parallel is just a two like that. It indicates the two is parallel. And... Uh, the transversal is EF, uh, which is the line EF, this one, which is our transversal line. All right. So that is exactly what you need to understand and revise everything that you had in your grade eight. You must know all about these parallel lines. All Okay, remember from those what you need to what you use to 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 apply uh, those phonics whatever that you used to apply, like this. All right, some they even apply this way. Okay, it's up to you. You can just use it that way. There's a lot of things that you can actually consider there. Okay, what is it that we are talking about? As we produce the parallel lines, the angles that are being just here. Let's say this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight angles that are being produced there. There are angles which form an F like this, which are called corresponding angles. Whenever an L letter F is formed like this, they are called corresponding angles. It can be this way corresponding angles and these angles they are equal the corresponding angles the one that form an f they are equal so we can refer that uh corresponding angles are equal all right so we're gonna form uh corresponding we've got corresponding angles are equal so this is this part i talked about it guys from your grade eight so also just make sure you go through that. Uh, so like I say, these ones, they form an F, like what we can see here, uh, meaning to say where we are forming an F like this, if we take it this way, we are forming an F like this. So we talk about this angle three, E3, and this 
E uh, the angle F7 there. So angle three and angle seven as we form an F there. So this angle three and this angle seven. So take note, one is inside, another one is outside. So if you form an F like this, one is inside, one is outside, okay? So if your F is like this, one is inside, one is outside. If your F is like this, one is inside, one is outside. If your F is like this, one is inside, one is outside. Okay, so that is the concept, how you take those angles, uh, corresponding angles, okay? So meaning to say, we are talking about angle E3. Okay, let us let me just call it angle three, okay? Angle three and angle seven. One is inside, one is outside. So angle three is equal to angle seven. Okay, if you consider the F this way, like this one, like this here, as you can see, we have got angle five and angle two. One is inside, one is outside. So we've got angle two uh, equal to angle five. If you consider your F this side here, there's another F there, okay? Are you seeing it? This side here, there's an F there, here, we formed the F. So you took off angle four and angle eight. They are equal. So angle four is equal to angle eight. All these are corresponding. Check another F here, this one. There's another F here that is slipping like this. So you took off angle six inside, angle one, which is outside. So that's angle six and angle one. Angle six is equal to angle one, or angle one is equal. Those are corresponding, they form F. So there are so many angles that we can have. Uh, then there are these ones which form a U like this, all right? Uh, that is, they form a U like this. Those are core interior angles, all right? So we have got uh, core interior angles. So these can form a C like this, okay? From the parallel lines, this angle and this angle, or it can be like this, or it can be like this facing up, or it can be like this facing down, as long we have got this concept of a C, the concept of a U, all right? So these are core interior angles. They form a C of this nature, or they can form a U of this nature. So that is, uh, what is the concept about these? They are supplementary, add up to one, there are two angles, remember? So they are supplementary, these ones. These ones, they are supplementary. Remember the word supplementary? Add up to one, two angles, which add up to 180. So these are two angles, which add up to 180 degrees. They form a C like this here. Take a closer look. There we are forming a C like this. So we are referring to this angle three and angle five. Angle three and angle five are supplementary. So what does it mean? It means angle three plus angle five must be equal to 180 degrees. Form another side here like this. We are forming another C like this. The angle four and angle six. They are supplementary again. So angle four plus angle six is equal to 180 degrees, okay? So that's what we have. Then we move on to these ones, which form an N like this, or it can even form a Z. It can be a Z like this, okay? So these are referred to as alternate angles, which can form an N like this from the parallel lines here and here. They are called alternate angles. All right, so we also have uh, alternate angles. alternate angles. So what is the relationship about uh, these alternate angles which form a Z? Alternate angles are equal. Okay, so alternate angles are equal. So like I say, these are the ones which form a Z like this, or they can form an N like this. You can consider those angles of that nature. So which part here on our diagram that we can, where we can see the alternate angles, where we can see a Z or an N? All right, there we have got a Z here, like this. So angle four and angle five are alternate to each other, this one, this one, and this one. So that's angle four and angle five is equal. 
angle four is equal to angle five for all, from alternate angles. Then if you check, we are forming another Z, but it is just a little bit stretched. Look how stretched it is, that one. It's still the same concept. So we talk of angle three and angle six. Angle three and angle six. So angle three is equal to angle six. Angle three is equal to angle six. That's it. So these are the only ones that we have here. And um, uh, let's just start it here. Then we've got these ones which form an X like that. What is it that you're considering there? Vertically opposite angles, but on the parallel lines, the major part of the parallel lines are these three. Yes, these ones you can also consider because it's also part of the, it's also part of the line. Um, that is the vertically opposite angles. And uh, I think we talked about that on our introduction. So I'm not gonna talk much about this. Vertically opposite angles. All right. So the vertically opposite angles, these are the ones that form an X like that. And they are equal, okay? So these ones are equal, okay? So you consider where you form an X, this angle is equal to this angle. This angle is equal to this angle. So on this line, if you had to check, that's a straight line. That's a straight line. So we are forming vertical opposite angles there. Angle one to angle three, angle two, and angle four. So angle one is equal to angle three. Angle two is equal to angle four. All right. So we said angle one is equal to angle three. Okay. That's angle three there. Sorry for that. Angle three. Okay, then another part of still on this, still on the top here, angle two is equal to angle four. All right, angle two must be equal to angle four. All right, if we move down there, we still have the same concept of the vertically opposite angles. This line is a straight line. There is another straight line intersecting like this. So we are forming again vertically opposite angles, angle five vertically opposite to angle eight. So angle five is equal to angle eight from that case. Uh, very sorry for that. Why is it now on eraser mode, guys? Sorry for that. All right, let's hope it's just gonna bring up now. You can't bring anything, guys. All right, sorry, you know these softwares, guys, sometimes they just tend to misbehave. We said two and four, uh, it was two and four here. 2 is equal to angle 4. All right, so there I was stating angle 5 and angle 8. Angle 5 equal to angle 8. And another one still uh, on the same side, this angle 6 and angle 7. They are also equal. These are vertically opposite angles. So you said angle 6 and angle 7 will be equal. Okay, that is what we are seeing here. So whenever you are given the parallel lines, that's the major part that you need to revise, to understand each of these, each corresponding angles, they are equal, co-interior angles, they add up to 180, supplementary angles, alternate angles are equal, vertically opposite angles, equal. So from that case, even if you are just given one angle, I want you to revise your basics from your grade eight. I had that part. So make sure that you do revise. If you are just given one angle, you must be able to fill in the wall with this one angle that you are given. Vertically opposite angles, this will be 50 degrees angles on a straight line. So you can subtract the 50 degrees from 180 is gonna be 130 degrees. This angle and this angle, vertically opposite angle. So this will be 130 degrees also. We are forming a Z, alternate angles. So if this angle is 50 degrees, this is also 50 degrees. We are also forming a Z here, alternate angles like this. So if this is 130, this is also 130 degrees. You must be able to play around with this diagram like that. There we now have 
vertically opposed angles at the end. So if this is 50 degrees, this is also 50 degrees. Vertically opposed angles, again, so if this is 130, this angle, on the other hand, is supposed to be also 130 degrees. We can fill in the whole diagram with one angle given, just one. So they can give you just one angle, and you must fill in everything. So I want you to revise uh, back your grade 8 part before we move on to the exercises, because on our next class, uh, now we shall be working with activities, exercises. So we are going to work with uh, a lot of exercises, a lot. So be prepared uh, to, to answer uh, the questions that we shall be working with. You test yourself first, then you confirm if the answer is correct to the video that we shall be having. So in order for you to revise those activities, be prepared also as an individual, do revise like I said, just go back to your grade eight, uh, like just revise one or two things there. The videos are already available. So you can just revise one or two so that you understand all the basics that we are going to be talking about. But for now, guys, that's it uh, from Met Zone African Motives till we meet again.